Hello and welcome to Together in Worship from the Salvation Army here in Gisborough. We've been sharing in this way since March 2020 when we went into lockdown at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. And we have been so pleased that people around the UK and even overseas have joined us in worship on YouTube. As we begin to have some normality once again, and as we begin to open our doors for worship in the Citadel here in Gisborough, we are still going to share in this way too. It's been a lovely way to bring people together in so many different places who might not be able to worship with others and who might still appreciate watching these videos. So we hope that you will continue sharing in this way. Last week we thought about one of the sayings of Jesus, I am the bread of life. We continue this theme as we are looking at another way that Jesus described himself, I am the light of the world. Light is a theme throughout the Bible and we start with the light of God who is both immortal and invisible. We share together in some lovely words from Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Amen.
Let's share in a prayer together. Father of light, Lord of love, we join together in worship and fellowship today just where we are. We want to thank you that though you dwell in light, though you are far above all creation, you still come to us by your spirit. And somehow because of Jesus, we can come into your presence to know you and be blessed. As we worship, we realize that we are needy people. We need your forgiveness for those things we have done we ought not to have done, and for those things we have not done that we ought to have done. Lord, we are sorry, and we ask for your grace and forgiveness. Help us to walk in the light of your love and in the joy that comes from knowing and serving you. We pray for those today who are sharing this time of worship and pray that in the unity of the Spirit and in the name of Jesus, this will be a time of blessing, of comfort and challenge to us all. We love you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the next weeks, we're going to be looking at some of the sayings of Jesus that revealed something of who he was. You'll recognise them. We've had, I am the bread of life. Next time we will read about Jesus being the gate or the door. Today is, I am the light of the world. The reading this morning is taken from John 8, verses 12 to 20. Jesus is the light of the world. Once again, Jesus spoke to the people. This time he said, I am the light of the world, follow me and you won't be walking in the dark. You will have the light that gives life. The Pharisees objected. You are the only one speaking for yourself and what you say isn't true. Jesus replied, even if I do speak for myself, what I say is true. I know where I came from and where I am going but you don't know where I am from or where I am going. You judge in the same way that everyone else does, but I don't judge anyone. If I judge, I would judge fairly, because I would not be doing it alone. The Father who sent me is here with me. Your law requires two witnesses to prove that something is true. I am one of my witnesses, and the Father who sent me is the other one. Where is your Father? they asked. You don't know me or my father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would know my father. Jesus said this while he was still teaching in the place where the temple treasures were stored, but no one arrested him because his time had not yet come. This is the word of the Lord. So Jesus is the light of the world. I think we might all agree that this world really does need the light of God, the light of life. In fact, we need the message of Jesus to shine out into our dark world. Well, here's a prayer contained in a lively song that asks that the light of Jesus will shine to let there be light. Shine, shine, shine. 
many of you will know the painting The Light of the World by Holman Hunt. Jesus is pictured carrying the light and knocking on an overgrown door. There is no handle, for the door symbolises the human heart and the door can only be opened from the inside. Jesus remains there, knocking, seeking admission. Here's a lovely piece of music that illustrates this painting and uses words that challenge us to invite him in. Here is Dean Goffin's The Light of the World.
Well, the nights are drawing in again. Facebook has now started to tell me how many sleeps there are until Christmas Eve. My goodness, we're expecting a heat wave. People are still on their summer holidays and some are now saying, oh, it's not as light in the evenings as it used to be. Now, we do like bright mornings, I do. If I'm up very early, I can catch a sunrise at the front of the house and it's beautiful. On summer evenings, I can look out at the back of the house and see the evening sun going down and feel its heat still in our garden. It's still August. I'm going to enjoy the light while I can. We certainly love the light. Whether we sit in the sun to get a tan or enjoy a walk or just enjoy the brightness of the day from inside the house, we know the nights will draw in, of course. The worst thing about winter is that we not only go to bed in the dark, but we also get up in the dark as well. And all through the winter months, we have too much darkness and not enough light. I guess that's why we look forward to Christmas with all the lights. Imagine a world without light. No starlight, no moonlight, no sunlight. It's impossible, of course. Nothing would grow, nothing would live. Without light, the world would cease to exist. While it's still August, why not plan to catch a sunrise? What a marvellous sight they can be. To see the sky gradually turn grey. To then see colours begin to appear as the clouds turn gold and orange. And then to see the sun appear. It's no wonder, is it, that thousands of years ago, people would worship the sun and pray for its return each day. But something else happens as the sun appears. I was driving very early one morning. I'd started the journey in the dark and I was driving towards the sunrise and it was quite noticeable what was happening. The fields around me were all dark. I couldn't see very far from the road, but soon I could see dim outlines. Then I could see grey shapes, and then the details of trees and houses. Soon there were colours everywhere, and the shadows had retreated into the corners, and soon all of those shadows disappeared. And I could see everything as clear as the summer sun as it rose above the hills. And not only that, but I could see the road stretch right away before me, where not long before I could only see the little patch of road just in front in my headlights. It was like a new world had been created. Jesus often used picture language to explain who he was. You'll remember last week, following the feeding of the 5,000, he declared, I am the bread of life. I'm the one who will nourish your soul. I will sustain you in this life and give you eternal life too. Today, we have heard that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now, that's a very big claim. Can you imagine the stunned silence? Just for a moment, as the religious leaders thought about it. Now, I can understand someone saying, I bring a light or I shine a light. Even I can help you find the light. But for a man to say, I am the light, is rather confident, perhaps you would say. I mean, remember the beginning of the Bible, and God said, let there be light. You may have heard the verse from Psalm 27, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Now Jesus is claiming a lot for himself in the light of those two verses. And then the Old Testament prophet Micah wrote, though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. And here is Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. It's no wonder the Pharisees challenged him. Jesus is claiming a divine power, a divine ability. But we know, of course, it wasn't just words. The deaf could hear, the blind could see, the dead were raised. If that's not bringing light to a dark world, I don't know what is. Any man can claim to be whatever he likes, but when a man claiming to be the light actually brings light, then, well, it must be true. Isaiah the prophet from 750 years before Jesus wrote, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Well, those people in Galilee and Jerusalem certainly saw that light. 
And John, one of the disciples who gradually realised who Jesus was, was able to write, in him, in Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of men. For the people there, it was as if his presence in their life was like the rising sun on a new day. Everything was dark and then the shadows were dispelled and he revealed the love of God that surrounds us. He enabled them to see the world in a new way and to see the path as it stretched before them. And yes, he did cleanse the leper, he did heal the lame, and that was light enough for them in their time. But for them also, and for us, he did the most wonderful thing that he still does today, and he still can do for you and for me. He can forgive in our world today, medical science can make the blind see again, can help the deaf to hear and the lame to walk. Now, we can't quite raise the dead, but we can do amazing things that give quality of life back to help us live longer. But there's one thing that nothing on this earth can do, no person on this world can give, and that's the forgiveness of sins. We long for it. Our world suffers because of it. Our own hearts are burdened because our sin remains. But there is one who can forgive. There is one who can take away the darkness and bring light to a mind that is troubled, a heart that is burdened. Follow me, says Jesus. Believe in me. Receive forgiveness from me and you will never walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. I like that phrase. Now you'll know the pop song by Debbie Boone, Leanne Rimes, Whitney Houston, and loads of others that says, And you light up my life. You give me hope to carry on. You light up my days and fill my nights with song. And Christians would say that's what Jesus Christ has done for them. He's lit up their lives with love and joy through the forgiveness of sins and the gift of peace. Jesus said that one of the reasons he came to this world was to bring life in all its fullness. I am the light of the world. Do you remember the psalm that we read at the beginning that said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Have you ever tried to walk anywhere with the light off? It's very difficult. But Jesus came to teach us. And his teaching is like a light that will help us on life's journey. He offers us guidance and reassurance and a certainty that our journey will end in safety. I am the light of the world, said Jesus. May we each find joy in following him who is the light, not just of the world, but of life itself.
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are my light and I want to follow you. You know the path and only you can guide me safely. So I place my hand in yours. Sometimes I need you to bring light into my heart, to allow your love to forgive and cleanse, to restore and renew. How lovely your light appears within me. Lord, indeed, search me, try me, consume all my darkness. May the light of life shine upon me just now, assuring me of a hope for the future and your presence today. Help me to live knowing that you indeed are the light of my life as I follow you. Thank you for the wonder-working power of Calvary that makes my heart new and opens my eyes to your eternal light. Amen. It's been very good to share with you once again here in Together in Worship. We pray that you'll have a good week and we leave you with this blessing. May God's light, life and love be yours throughout this week and always. Amen. Amen.